Next thing we got to fix is my high flow uh, air pump. This aerates my fish pond. Uh, so I was noticing that my, I've got two, uh, I think they're eight inch stones in my pond that bubbles and it turns the water in the pond, aerates the fish, uh, and it helps keep the water nice. So I was in my shop, I had this air pump in my shop, and it, I guess, you know, you get used to something being on all the time and you don't pay attention to it, and I realized that it wasn't running. So, um, it's like, man, my air pump's out. So I got to looking at it, it's like, well, it says here, clean air filter every six months. Well, this has been running in my shop for probably three years, uh, and it runs fine. However, it is inside the shop, it's not outside in the dirt, so uh, I did pull the screw off and I checked the air filter. It was dirty, as you would expect for three years of use. Probably not as dirty as one that would be on a, a septic tank. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, it was dirty. I do cut wood and stuff inside. And, um, so, I cleaned that, replaced it. Um, then, still, the pump would not turn on. It wouldn't run at all. So, I was, happened to have my manual from three years ago that I stuck in the drawer. And reading through here, there's a safety screw. And this is the safety screw they, they give you a spare. Um, so they said if your pump was dropped or hit in an odd way or, or, um, or if a diaphragm's damaged. So uh, we're gonna take this apart and we're gonna try to figure out what, what is actually the problem with my pump. Uh, I'm hoping in the troubleshooting guide it says replace the screw. Uh, it says SP switch activated, uh, which I believe is the case because there's nothing happens. It doesn't make any noise. So the next step is safety screw. So I'm going to pull the top off so it, I've got it unplugged. Uh, of course, you want to do that before you get into any electrical appliance. Um, so I'm going to pull this, try to, try to pull this housing, see if I can break it apart. apart. And uh, this could be very difficult to get these loose and if they're uh, real hard. I would recommend using a nut driver or uh, the top of socket or a wrench to break these loose. Like I said, mine's inside out. It's not in the weather, so um, it's easy. Um, and I did take this apart already, so that's that's really why it's easy. Uh, the first time I actually had to uh, get a rubber mallet and tap this off. Um, and so I have my rubber mallet and this was stuck. There's a rubber gasket on there. This was stuck fairly, fairly good. In fact, I thought we had another screw or something that I missed. Um, basically, I was able to kind of hold onto this uh, air outlet port and just strike the outside edge of that uh, housing all the way around and it took a pretty good um, you know, I had to strike it several times to get it to, to actually come loose. But it did come loose. Uh, there was four bolts holding it. And also the safety screw was in the top, uh, the top of the housing when I had knocked it loose. Um, so in the manual, this is a, the safety switch. It's designed to uh, snap 
whenever you have some kind of malfunction. I have to get in there with my light and see. They said this can happen if your diaphragm's busted, so. Just trying to see if I can see anything that looks broken. And it, yeah, it's definitely broken. So the diaphragm's broken. I had also tested this, and it, it's a very. Um, what happens is. When your diaphragm breaks, what I was reading in the manual, when the diaphragm breaks, it's an irregular, um, I guess, oscillation between the two pumps, uh, between the two, the solenoids are going back and forth, and the pumps are moving back and forth, so I guess one of the diaphragm breaks, and it gives this real, you know, violent shaking, and it snaps this little screw. So... That would explain why it was so loud when I plugged it in and I actually just touched those together with an insulated screwdriver. I just wanted to test and see if electrically it was sound and it is, um, but looks like the diaphragms are busted. So what we're going to have to do, we can pull this apart and we're going to have to order the diaphragms. And then that'll be that'll be another project in itself. Uh, I'm gonna have to get the manual out to read and see how this works. How to replace the diaphragms. The diaphragm is supposed to be nice and smooth and in one piece. And actually, I can see the edge of that diaphragm is extended out of the casing and. Uh, I can see where it's been split all the way around. So it looks like we're going to have to pull these four screws on the head. There's a little uh, discharge hose. We'll take that little clamp loose, pull these screws, and then we'll, we'll be able to see more uh, on the diaphragm. Just going to take a screwdriver and kind of uh, work this hose loose. I got my clamp uh, pulled back and I'm just going to take the screwdriver and work this hose loose. Okay, now according to the uh, manual, you got four screws here. We'll take those four screws out. Use our little drill. The bottom ones are probably harder to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Man, that's some long screws. Sure enough, I would say a broke diaphragm. Definitely a broke diaphragm. Okay. <sighs> well, I guess the conclusion is right. So, two busted diaphragms, which they said would make the safety screw break. So. I guess the manufacturer knew what they were talking about. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put these back on and just put them in place until I can get that diaphragm on. Okay, so. I'm 
guessing I can get this piece right here which would house a diaphragm and then um, just have to take this nut loose off the uh, the actuator arm take that loose and put it on the new diaphragm uh, like this I'll probably have to probably have to put that uh, nut on the new diaphragm here then put this cap on and screw it down but I haven't read that far into the manual so that's just uh, speculation alright I'm going to take the other side off see if it's the same that way I know if I need to order what I need to order these pumps look really good and they're they've got uh, rubber bushings it's a uh, it's actually a pretty smooth running little pump I guess if you had fish tanks or whatever you, you could this thing really puts out the air. It'll. My uh, stones are probably. I think one's at like five foot, and the other one's probably around uh, maybe eight foot. And it it really turns the water over. In fact, when I first installed this, uh, the water turned over quite a bit, and you could you could actually smell the gas coming from all the. Uh, leaves and stuff that were rot, rotting at the bottom of the pond. So and that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to turn the turn the water over. I don't know if the fish like that. At least the first first little bit, but they probably liked it afterwards. So man, this one the uh, I guess when I'm assuming the other side probably broke first. And it actually the actuator arm came and hit the end cap. Got a pretty good, pretty good knock on there. Um, sorry, I need to turn this around. This side is still intact, somewhat. You can see, uh, see it right there. That it's it's shot, but it is intact. So that would be how you just kind of see how it's going to go on. When you put the new one on, you have to put that nut on and then put that end cap in place. I think I did note this. I'm going to go ahead and put all these pieces together because I don't know, uh, you know, how long it will be before I can get the diaphragm. turn these to the side. I don't have to take them off again. This little air filter kind of that's what I'm thinking it is. Not for sure. Definitely looks like an air filter. Probably could read in there and tell. That's funny. Sound absorber. So I guess that gives you a little uh, sound insulation from these uh, solenoids hammered back and forth. This is an aluminum housing. Um, it's a good idea to always start all your screws with before you use uh, an electric drill or a pneumatic impact. Really a pneumatic impact. We had an incident where um, changing lawnmower blades, and you know, it's everybody's got electric impacts nowadays. And if you uh, get that bolt and you just try to stick it up there, do NASCAR, uh, and you get that cross threaded with that electric impact or any impact, even a drill. You're probably going to strip that hub out, and that's what happened. 
So instead of just being a quick sharpen your blades, put the new blades on, it was uh, my lawnmower's broke and I have to go get um, a new hub and install a new hub, which is probably, you know, a five second mistake where you just take the bolt and make sure you get it started and then you stick the impact on. Um, you know, it costs probably $150, $200 and then all the time to replace it if you can replace it yourself, which most people can do it themselves. They may not want to or may not think they can. But anyway, all right, we got our pump back together. We're going to go order our parts and we'll be back.